Hello everybody and welcome to Felts by Philippa. Today we're going to be making this really sweet Wensleydale sheep. Um, it's very cute, lots of fluff. I'll show you what you need in a minute. Nice cloven hooves and a beautiful pretty face. So what you need is wire. This is one mil but 1.6 is better. Cutters, um, a pair of scissors, any scissors will do. These are uh, four to five mil plastic eyes. These are four mil, but you can have five mil. It's fine, not a problem. Little tiny plastic ones that you glue in, so you need a bit of glue as well. Then we've also got, this is the base wool that I'm going to use. It's white carded Shetland wool. Nice and easy to work with. A pink, very soft pink for the nose. This is a light brown for the hooves and a darker brown to show the face and I didn't use the black in the end it's up to you um, you can use it on the face but I used the light brown now this is a Wensleydale raw wool that is washed so it's nice and clean and it's curly but you have to sift through as you do it but it is absolutely beautiful stuff it's really great and it didn't cost much it was seven pounds per hundred grams so let's get started Oh, yes, and this is the length of wire that I cut. It's 36 to 40 inches. I cut 36 and I needed a bit more, really. But Right, here we go. So we're going to turn over the ends so that they don't stab you. And this is how we're going to make the legs. And you just bend it. I'm not using any tape on this one. I found it to be a lot easier. The wool is quite bendy. So you're just going to be making the four legs and a little bit for the neck. I don't always put wool um, wire all the way through to the head because I find it doesn't matter, the head's quite sturdy, I can attach it really well. So you just want the four legs and the body. I think I made that a bit long, so I just bent it over again and made the body a bit shorter. So we start with the wool, um, and this is just a 36 inch triangular needle, it's like a really hard, strong needle that I use for all my base work. So you just roll it over really, really tight and then you uh, start needle felting it in. You want it to be firm, it doesn't have to be neat because this is all going to be covered up by the wool a bit later on. So I'll just work that in and then I'll do some front and back. You don't need to watch it all so I have cut some of the clips, there we go. So I've worked it all in, made it nice and firm. I still need some more because you need to have quite a large amount there to be able to work the fleece into. And you still want your sheep to look quite big and fluffy. I put a little bit more under the tummy here because I just wanted him to stand out and look a bit more roly-poly. There we go, so I'm happy with the shape. The neck, unfortunately I didn't do long enough, it's not a problem because the neck we can make afterwards. The legs were too long so I just cut them down at this point, made them all even. I might have twisted them or turned over the ends doesn't matter too much because it's all going to be covered up. So I'm just turning over the ends so that they don't hurt me because you can quite easily stab yourself with everything. So we're going to do the legs so I attach um, a piece of wool and then I wind it round, keeping it as even as possible. Winding it nice and tightly. And then you just start stabbing it in and firming it up. When you've got it attached at the top, it makes it quite easy for you to sort of work your way down and round. Do the bottom, um, and with the bottom of it, to make it a bit more flat, you do a lot of stabbing inwards, um, upwards from the bottom, it really helps. firm it up, you want it to be nice and firm, this bit will be on show. I had a bit of the wool that um, showed that you turned it over so I got an extra bit of wool and I've just patched it up and covered it, so it was just showing there, so I've just covered it up so it didn't show any creases or seams because you will be able to see the legs. There we go, so I've done two, I'm just going to show you again that I attach it at the top and then it's very carefully winding and folding it round, nice and tight, pulling out any bits because the bits will show. You know, you always get bits of uh, straw in this. And then bending it over and starting to secure it. There we go, four legs all done. Next we're going to do the hooves. So I use a slightly 
uh, darker colour gives it a bit of definition you can do whatever colour hooves you want if you were doing herdwicks you might do a grey um, and you take a small amount of wool wrap it round and then start attaching it and then I work round to create a clean line so that it's all level and it's quite versatile as you do it you can move this line up or down, make it nice and even, and then um, work it in. And uh, again, I will do a lot of needle felting up from the bottom to give it a flat edge. It takes a while. These things, you know, this takes me a day on and off to do a whole sheep. It's not a quick thing. You do need to make sure it is nice and firm. And I love having the wire frame because this makes them stand really, really well. So there we go, that's one. Get a little bit of the brown, tease it out into a line, and then this is going to be the cleft of the hooves. So at the front, attach it at the top, and then take it under, and you don't have to take this, the back bit, all the way to the top because otherwise sometimes you start to confuse the front and the back of the uh, sheep. But then you just start working it in and it creates a little cleft as if it was an actual sheep's hoof and it just looks really sweet. There we go, so do the rest, they're all done. And if they look a bit wonky just twist it round. Now we're going to do the neck, so we'll give him a, a small neck, I always find it better to give them a bit of a neck and then put the head on that rather than just attach the head straight away. As usual I end up doing the neck too big and have to trim it down later but <clears throat> still got a nice firm neck. So I'm needle felting one end of the wool and I'm leaving a fluffy bit at the other end to help with attaching it. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is all going to be covered up with the curly fleece afterwards. Make sure it is well attached. There we go. Now I'm going to make the head. And the head, I would say, you would like it long, ish. Uh, the nose has to come down towards a point and the uh, bit up by the eyes and where the ears are is going to be slightly wider. It takes me a while with this wool. I wasn't quite happy with the, the shape it was going into so it took me quite a lot of folding to get it right. And if you fold it nice and small it just makes the needle felting so much easier. And the head is something that is going to show so you want to work on it and make sure that the nose um, all looks nice and clean, with no seams. There we go, so I've worked on the head and I've firmed it all up. And I've cut the top off. <laughs> and that just makes him a little bit... Otherwise his head was sticking up in the air. And so hold it on where you want the head to be positioned and firm it up. And I'm really pressing that head down because I want, I don't want the head pointing up in the air here. And then I get a piece of wool and wrap it around like a scarf and that just really firmed it up all the joints. I'm happy with him now so I'm going to do his nose. Now you can use the black for this but I just find the brown is a bit softer. So take a piece and you're doing the lower part of the mouth first. So attach either side, make sure you're happy with it and it's level, look at it from the front and then go back and forth. Um, if there's too much there at the ends trim it off otherwise you'll have a wider mouth on one side than the other. And the next bit is the top bit, it's like the nostrils. And so it's like doing a second mouth or a second moustache, but a bit shorter. And you can put the nostrils pointing up in the air a bit. So it's like a V. 
And again, I had too much there on the end, so I just cut that off. And if it goes wrong, you can just pull it all off and start again. That's the beauty with um, needle felting. There we go, so that's the nostrils. Trim it up. And then you need to join the two, otherwise it just looks silly. And once you do the join, it looks a lot, lot better. There we go. And I give him a little bit of a pink nose because it just looks cute. Now, Wensleydale sheep, if you actually look at them, have a grey nose. And I think there is a slightly grey as well. But I like my sheep to look cute. <laughs> so um, I did the grey on the nose and it looked wrong because his hooves were brown. So I tore it all off and um, I did it in the style that I wanted to do it. The pink nose uh, certainly gives it a bit more character. So the eyes. So I've got a little eye stabber hole thing. It didn't cost me much online. And you stick that in, twist it a bit. If you angle the eyes inward and downward, don't do them straight across because you'll hit the other eye. Um, so I position them in, make sure I'm happy before I glue. Yeah, quite happy with that. Get the glue and then a tiny bit of glue on the end. Any glue will do really. A lot of people sew beads in as eyes which is possible if you would prefer to do that it's very nice I wasn't happy that, that hadn't gone all the way in so I just uh, did it again if you put the eye holder in there it keeps the hole open because the hole sort of closes up really quickly looks horrific but <laughs> there we go so I was happy with that one and it doesn't take long for them to stick so I'm going to do the ears whilst they um, firm up so take a bit of wool fold it over and fold it over now, if you do an oval with a point at the end, it's probably easiest. So needle felt it in and then turn the edges in to try and create a nice edge bit. See, I'm turning the edges in a bit. And then I do hold it on its side and just needle felt downwards as well, just to give it a bit more firmness. It doesn't take too long to do the ears, but it's nice if they're neat. and then you will fold them in half. So that's how it will work. But I'm going to put a bit of pink inside the ears again because I want him to look cute. So when you're putting the pink on, just check it's not come through the other side. Um, especially if you're putting a darker color on like you're doing horse ears or something. So it can come through quite easily. So needle felt it lightly. There we go, I'm happy with that. And then fold them over and then needle felt them folded turn one side then the other and that's all ready. So you need two. So just checking that they look good. So there's two. They look like rabbit ears there. It doesn't look right at the moment but he will do. Don't worry. So this wool is lovely. You have to pull it out, tease it a bit. The ends look a little bit brown but if you pull the ends apart the brownness disappears. So get a stretch of the wool uh, probably about four inches, needle felt across the middle and then fold it over and needle felt again and this is how we create a sort of skirt on the sheep. I'll do one more so you get a stretch. It's a little bit tricky to sort of neaten it all up but if it was easy everyone would do it. And I cut it in half and then I needle felt through the middle of it and then fold it over and needle felt it down. This just means it's really firm. Obviously, if a child got hold of your needle felted sheep or whatever you do, they would probably pull it apart, but this just makes it as firm as can be. There we go, see the brown ends? You tease them apart, then they look a lot lighter and you can use all of the wool. If the end is brown, just cut the tip of it off. <clears throat> there we go. And I try and do it so the nicest ringlets end up on top as well. So if you've got some really cute ringlets, see there, I tried to do it so that they would end up showing. So I've done all of the low layer and then take some more and go about half an inch further up. You end up doing about three layers going up and the, fast, the further up you go, the faster it gets. Through the middle and then fold over. This is where he really starts to look cute <laughs> because until this point they just look silly. There we go, all the way around. So that's the next level. 
and then another level, half an inch further up. And you start to sort of get into the neck area. Oh, there's my nose, how nice. There we go, right. And fold it over. And do that all the way round. There we go. Oh, it looks so fluffy. It's really good. And then I start to do up the back. So the back bit I will do crossways and fold towards the back. But um, you don't have to be as strict as fold as, as really needle felting it all in there. You can start to needle felt it downwards almost. So I've done all up the back. I'm going to start to do the ears. So I put the ears on now because if you put them on beforehand you'll end up squishing them so badly so I always leave the ears till the last point so I like my ears to be pointing downwards a bit so again see the back of the ears it's not going to be showing because we're going to do all of his head on this one so it doesn't have to be neat you just have to attach them firmly Lovely. And then you go up over the head with the rest of the wool, which we'll start to do. Nice, oh, so sweet. And if you've got any really good ringlets, just save them for the top because that's where it'll look good. And um, up round the neck, you needle felt through the middle, and then you just sort of gently ease them in a bit. You don't have to needle felt the top of it down as well, because you, otherwise you'll see that part. So you don't want that. There we go. And then I've done this head. Oh, he's very cute. So he's all done and you just go round just needle felting any big bits that are sticking out. There we go. So thank you for watching. There he is. Subscribe for more videos and if you want to see him all finished you can look uh, my Etsy shop Felts by Philippa. Thanks a lot. <laughs>